Chapter 18 Previously Let me call upon your future queen and the next heir to obsidian terrain, Ariana Sue Davis and Noah Milo Davis. He shouted as I gulped and walked forward. Ariana POV The crowd cheered and clapped as we walked to the balcony. I looked down and gulped as I saw hundreds of people in front of me. A hand slipped into mine as I looked up at Alistair. He squeezed my hand and smiled as I smiled back at him. He then picked up Noah and wrapped his hand around my waist. I blushed at the intimacy and the crowd cheered even more. At the left corner, I saw the elders who destroyed my home. They were looking at me without an expression and somehow I felt fear in my heart. Long live the king, queen, and prince, one of them shouted as the rest responded with, Hail! 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 After introducing us to the people around, Alistair filled the people with updates of the war. I learned that the man named King Xavier was the enemy dark wizard, and that he rejected the peace treaty because Alistair disagreed on giving him some kind of powerful gem. You are not supposed to lose your control, Alistair. Vickis shouted as soon as we were out of the sight of the people. He is questioning my powers and disrespecting the queen. Alistair replied, glaring at Vickis. But, my king, violence is not a good option. Please try to refrain your anger. Vickis said as he nodded. Fine. He said, sighing. Shall I take you for tea, Arya? Alistair suddenly asked, turning to me. Um, okay. But what about Noah? I asked, confused at his sudden suggestion. Oh, Eleanor will take care of him. He said as the door opened. A woman with blue skin walked in. No, they look like scales. Her eyes were gold and like of a reptile. I, I don't think it is a good idea, Alistair. Noah might freak out, I said, as I looked at the woman. Don't worry, your highness. Noah is familiar with me, she said before her eyes glowed. Her blue scales changed to human skin, and her iris was also changed back to normal ones. I grasped as a familiar blonde woman stood in front of me. Mrs. White? I shouted, shocked, as she smiled. My real name is Eleanor, Highness, she said, bowing down in respect. I have made Eleanor come to Earth to look after Noah. She is a blue dragon and has the past of taking care of me and my ancestors. I trust her, and I know if any danger comes to Noah, she will protect him. Alistair said as I slowly nodded, trying to process everything. He is in his room, Ella, the one opposite to me. He said as Eleanor nodded before bowing and walking out. So, tea? He asked as I nodded and followed him in the opposite direction. We walked outside the palace and into a beautiful garden where a few maids were setting the table. Please. Alistair said as he pulled the chair for me, mumbling a quick thank you. I sat on the chair and he took the chair opposite to me. One of the maids swirled their hands and the teapot flew to us before filling the cup. I watch in awe as they stood in their place, but magically set the tea and the snacks on the table. I have arranged earth food for you and Noah till you get used to the terrain food, Alistair said as I nodded and drank my tea. I could feel his stare as I drank my tea. I felt self-conscious of how I looked when I'm under his gaze. I know you have lots to ask. Alistair said as I looked at him. I do. And it starts with the question I asked from the beginning. Why don't I remember you? I said as he nodded. As a future king, I was expected to know culture and life of not only my terrain, but outside world in order to maintain cooperation between all worlds. In that concept, I was given training where I visit Earth on a regular basis. That is when I met you, the stubborn, big mouth, hard-working high school girl who quickly stole my heart. He said as I blushed at his gaze. My stay in the terrain started to become less and less as I would come back quickly to visit you. But one day, when I visited you, you were crying because your relative from your mother's side came and tried to force marry you off to a rich snob. He said as I scrunched my eyebrows. Now that he mentioned it, I do remember my uncle coming to me with such a proposal. 
but as I further tried to think about it, my head started to pain. I gripped onto the table and groaned as the memory after that became a blur. Arya, are you all right? He asked, running to me. I'm... I'm all right, I said, as he looked at me in worry. Do you need to lay down? He asked, as I shook my head. No, I need to know more. Please tell me what happened next, I said, as he gave me a look filled with worry. Okay. He said, sighing, but he still stood there, kneeling down in front of me. So, when you told me about it, I knew I had to do something quickly. I was so angry, I fought with your family. I actually gave your uncle a deal that I will give him twice the amount that rich guy offered for you. Your uncle agreed, and you were given to me. But yeah, you didn't know about it. And later on, when you found out, well, you were angry. Very angry. He said, as I tried to remember all this. I was afraid to reveal myself to you. I have tried many times, but in the end, I always back out. I didn't want to lose you. I started to go back to the terrain rarely. Whenever father calls, I always give excuses. One day, the dark wizards attacked the kingdom, and it was chaos. I was to be crowned the king in a few months, but I was absent to protect the kingdom. The elders put on a restraint on me, and I was forced to erase my existence in the entire earth. He said, as I stared at him. Is that why I can't remember you? I asked, as he nodded, taking my hand. I would have never left you, Arya. But I was restricted and forbidden to enter Earth till the end of the war. I wanted to take you here, but I didn't want you to get involved in the war. He said, as I nodded. I understand. I said, as he smiled. I'm sorry you had to raise Noah on your own. But you raised him well. You made him a son worth proud to be. He said, kissing my hand. Chapter 19 Alistair's POV The trial of King Alistair Regmore is commencing now when the sun has touched the statue of our almighty creator and protector, Lord Vamir. The trial shall be recorded in all the fair matters of the magic of Iris. Proceed the charges of the king, Elder Kelmer, the elder among the council said as he looked down at me. The charge against Alistair is for the breach of the order of the council. The order given was the restriction of going to earth until the end of the war. On the 85th day of the obsidian year, 2035, King Alistair has broken the restriction by entering the premises of Earth for a time period of four days, or 96 hours. Does the king refuse to accept the statement above? Elder Vitalia, the female consul, asked me. I do not object, I say, with confidence as they nodded. Do you have any valid reasons for setting foot on Earth? Elder Saliki, the other council member, asked. I have returned to Earth to bring back the queen and future king of obsidian terrain. As my son's power has been projected, they are no longer safe living in Earth alone. As the king, it is my duty to produce and protect the future king of our terrain. But, as a man, it is the duty of myself to protect his family. I believe those two points are enough to justify my urgency to go back to Earth. I say, as they all nodded. Very well. Your point is valid to an extent and because of that, your punishment will be diminished. You are kindly requested to leave the hall for some time, as we council will decide an appropriate punishment, he said, as I nodded. They stood up and bowed to me in respect, and I did the same before walking out. So, how did it go? Vickas asked as I rubbed my head. Not as bad as I thought it will be, I said as he nodded. The council right now is happy that you have provided a strong future heir, he said as I sighed. But they are not happy on the fact that I disobeyed them. I just want to finish it and go home. How is Arya and Noah? I asked. They both are fine. Ariana is quickly picking up what Hela is teaching. She is very keen and interested in the life of Terrain. Noah has returned from his school, but he seems a bit dull, though. He said as I looked at him in worry. Did something bad happen? I asked as he shook his head. I have contacted the school immediately, and they said nothing happened in according to their knowledge. Maybe the new life is taking a toll on him. I'm sure he will be all right in a few days, he said, as I nodded, still unsure. I made a mental note to talk to him about school. The council has requested your presence, a werewolf in his late thirties said, as I nodded. I will see you in a few, I said, as Vickas nodded. Yes, your majesty, he said, bowing his head. 
I walked back to the Great Judgment Room as the Council stood up. Welcome back, King Alistair. Please, take the seat, Elder Kalamir said as I sat on the accused chair. The Council of Elder has come up with an appropriate punishment for the breach. Since King Alistair is to attend the need of the people regularly, and also since his absence for more days in throne will lead to weaken of the terrain, we have decided of a punishment for lesser day, but greater intensity, he said as I nodded. The punishment will consist of 1,000 whipping under the statue of Almighty Vimir. The Aloha Whipper will be used in fulfilling this task. The whipping will be followed by a night of imprisonment in the Deterior Prison, he said as I nodded. Do you have anything to say before we finalize it, King Alistair? He asked me. Yes. I will accept the punishment without any resistance, as long as this doesn't reach my family's ear, I said as he nodded. Very well. Any other? He asked as I shook and said a no. I hereby declare this punishment to be initiated tomorrow evening when the sun touches the statue of Lord Vermeer, he said, before raising his hands and forming the sealed verdict. What? That is too much of a punishment. Aloha Whipper will leave you marks, not to mention weak. That itself is too much a punishment. Adding a deterior prison? Vickers shouted as I sighed. Wizards can use magic to heal themselves, even if some will take more time and energy. But we have a biggest poison, and that is the Cassian flower. Beautiful and violet in color, but emits a odor capable of weakening a wizard, and if mixed in blood, even killed. An Aloha Whip is said to have a small amount of Cassian in it, and hence difficult to heal. And even if they are healed, the marks are forever. But a deterior prison is an intense prison filled with Cassian flowers. We become very weak as our body will start to react and burn under the odor. Calming both is said to be a rigorous punishment which is given for heavy disobedience. So I understand why Vicus is shocked and frightened. There is nothing we can do, Vicus. Even if I object, they will ignore, but at all cost, it should not reach Ariana and Noah, I said as he nodded relentlessly. As I entered the palace, and I was immediately attacked by someone. Papa! Noah shouted as he sat on my stomach. This is a pleasant welcome, I said, laughing. Noah, where did you run off? Arya's voice rose as she came into view. Oh my, are you alright? She asked as she ran to me. She quickly picked up Noah as he started struggling. Noah, stop it! She scolded. Noah immediately folded his hands on his chest and huffed as he now sit on his mother's hip. You shouldn't run off alone. You are still not used to this place, she said, putting him down. But I saw Daddy come through the window, he said as he gave me a cheeky grin. Have you both eaten? I asked as they both cutely shook their head together. We were waiting for you, Papa. Eat together, he said, fist bumping the air. He wanted to eat with you, Arya said as I nodded and picked up Noah. And what about you? I asked as she blushed. I went and kissed her cheek, letting my lips linger for a few seconds before walking to the kitchen. Come on, let's eat, I said, laughing.